In this lesson, you will learn about logging in and out of Opera PMS, changing your password in Opera, navigating the Opera PMS menus, and accessing the Opera Knowledge Base. When you log into your PC, on your PC desktop, you should have an icon called Opera. When you double click on that icon, it will take you to the Opera web page. On the left hand side here where it says Opera Login, you have a place for the username. The username will be given to you by the, ad, the admin of your hotel, the administrator of your hotel. Now logging in using the credentials predefined by the property system administrator. The next line is password. Your password should be a minimum length of seven characters and it can be a maximum length of 40 characters. Required characters in your password must include both alphabetic and numeric characters. Uniqueness. If you are changing your password, the new password may, may not be the same as any of the last four passwords that you have used. Password is the schema field. A schema is a section of the database that holds a particular set of information. There are two standard schemas that are typically installed at properties. We may call one the live hotel or production, which represents the hotel as configured by the system administrators. Also in the schema dropdown, you may have one called the training hotel or training. This is an exact copy of the live hotel and is used to train the users. Usually the training hotel will be removed and recreated before the installer's departure property. This should be used by the hotel staff for training new employees. If you notice down in the left hand corner we have what's called a registered terminal. When your IT department installs Opera on the workstation, during the installation when registered terminal is being loaded, it inherits the computer name of the workstation that Opera is being loaded on. Now I'm going to put in my username. I'm going to use the username as supervisor and then I will put in my password. Your IT department will create your username and password and the first time you log into Opera you will be prompted to change your password. If you use the wrong password, it will call, show you that you had an invalid username and password to please try again. Click on Login. Once you click on Login, it takes you to the splash page. Splash page. We call this, these are the application access controls here. The buttons on the splash page provide access to each application with access based on the user permissions. Most of the day-to-day -day operation is within the property management system PMS here. Also if you notice down in the left hand corner we have what's called available sessions. Each time you log into a PMS session it allows the user to invoke a maximum of four active sessions at one time. So if I want to log into PMS, I'm going to click on the PMS tab. Notice my available sessions. One of them turns red. That means that I've used one of the available sessions. The PMS bar, it takes me to the Opera login page. I'm going to click on login and that will log me in to the PMS system. Logged in, you notice we're on the main page of the Opera PMS here. Up at the top, we call this the title bar. This shows the application which you are in logged into the Opera PMS, and it also tells you what version of Opera that you are currently using. At this particular hotel, we're using version 5.0, .05, .00, 
slash 16, which means this is the e patch number 16. Over to the right of that is the hotel code, or we call this also the resort ID, which is called Elite. Next to that is the name of your hotel. This particular hotel is called the Elite Training Opera. And next to that is the business date of your hotel, which it shows we're on May 31st, 2017. Below that, on the menu bar, is the functions that are available with this application. If I click on the word reservations, these are your choices for the reservations op options on the menu bar. If I move my cursor over to front desk, these are the choices under front desk. We have cashiering, we have rooms management, accounts receivables, commissions, end of day, miscellaneous, setup, back office interface, our help button or menu, and then to exit out of Opera. Also on the user information bar here, it tells you who is currently logged in to this Opera session. Currently, supervisor is logged in and that's the username that I used when I logged into Opera. On the toolbar here, this also shows uh, the same as the menu bar. These icons represent the same thing as the words. When I click on reservation, I have the same reservation choices. If I click on the icon for front desk, you get the same menu choices as you do when you click on the word front desk. So a user can either use the top menu bar or they can use this toolbar here with the icons. To change my password in Opera, I would click on the word miscellaneous up the top here, or I could click on the icon here called miscellaneous. When I click on the miscellaneous icon, over on the left here, I have a button for change password. I would click on change password, I would input my old password in, and then input my new password, and then confirm my new password. Remember the password has to have seven or more characters or numbers, have to have at least one letter or alphabetical letter, and one number, and it has to be a password that you haven't used in the last four times. Once you input your old password and your new password, you will click on the OK button and it will pop up and say password has been changed successfully. Also while navigating through Opera through all the Opera screens, if you notice on this page the word reservations has the letter R underlined. Under front desk it has the letter F underlined. Throughout Opera, if you would like to navigate using your key board instead of using your mouse, you can use the Alt key and whatever letter is underlined on that word. So if I wanted to activate the reservation menu, I could do Alt R and it would navigate the reservation menu. And if I wanted to choose something on that list, I can use my down arrow and my up arrow to navigate through there. If I put my cursor in the middle of the screen, the choices disappear. If I want to bring up something in the front desk menu and I want to use my keyboard, I would do Alt F and it would activate my choices in the front desk menu. Okay. Also on this web page, we have the help knowledge at the right. We have an Opera Help. If you click on Help up at the top and click on Opera Help, this will take you directly to our Help option menu. It's called our Opera Knowledge Base. Notice it has all the different items that all the different mod modules that we have in Opera. If we wanted to activate and look for information about the Opera Property Management System, I can 
click the plus sign over on the left and if I wanted to look at information about the PMS operations I can click on PMS operations and over on the right gives you a list of topics that we could that are included in this group. If I wanted to learn how to make a reservation in Opera I can click on reservation topics and it gives me a list of all the topics in the reservation menu. The knowledge base is very helpful and another way that you can access the knowledge base in Opera, we can use a quick key on our keyboard. If you use the F1 quick key, press F1, it will also take you to the Opera knowledge base. Notice you have a search box up here at the top. So if you're searching for a particular area that you want to, that you need help with, you can do a search there and it will search everything in the Opera knowledge base. To get out of the Opera Knowledge Base, you just click the X on the tab up the top and it will take you back to your main menu. Also under the Help area, you have About Opera here. So if I click on About Opera, it takes you to this Opera Hotel version information. It tells you the installation date of your Opera and what items that you have installed. In this particular hotel, we have Opera PMS installed and what version we're on. And it also tells us what uh, else we've been, um, what we've created. And we have the Opera Oxy that has been loaded here. Tells you our forms version. Tells you what database we're on. We're on the Oracle database 11G and it tells you the database language. Okay. This is called the Opera version, Opera Hotel version info. I click close and it takes me back to the main menu. Okay, in this lesson we have learned about logging in and out of the Opera PMS. I have showed you how to change your password. I have also showed you how to navigate to the different Opera PMS menus. And I also showed you how to access the Opera Knowledge Base. Going to Opera Help, I showed you about, about Opera. And also another way to access the Opera Help is by pressing the F1 key on your keyboard. Welcome to the Opera Profile course. Upon completion of the profile course, you will be able to identify the different types of profiles used in Opera, create different types of profiles, search for profiles using the Opera search screen, and understanding how to navigate and to use profile options on the profile screen. To access the profile screen, I'm going to click on the button or icon for reservations. Notice how it's in blue. And then I'm going to click the button for profiles. It will take us to a profile search screen here. If you notice, when we access any of the screens in Opera, it will always tell you what screen you are located on. In this particular one, we are on the profile search screen. So under the profile search screen, I'm going to click down on the view by and talk a little bit about each type of profile. Just a reminder about profiles in Opera. Every guest, company, travel agent, and group that has stayed or done business with the hotel will have a profile created and stored in Opera. The information collected depends on what the hotel has deemed as necessary. Profiles are also created for the basis of collecting indispensable management data such as stay histories and revenue statistics. Profiles will contain information such as negotiated rates, frequent stay program records, billing, and much more. 
Profiles are the foundation of opera. In order for the reservation to exist, there must be a profile created in the system. An existing profile or one created at the time of the reservation. Now, the types of profiles that are in Opera. We're going to talk about the individual profile first. The individual profile type is primarily used for the guests. Having an accurate profile allows for faster and more accurate reservations process because the hotel already has all the pertinent information. The company profile. The company profile are, are the businesses who book catering functions with the property, the businesses who sponsor guest reservations. In some cases, company profiles have the billing details as well. Accounts receivable account information is associated with a company profile. The travel agent profile, sometimes simply called agents. These are the professionals who book business at the property for the guests who are their client. Travel agent profiles are important in managing relationships and in handling the commissions that are paid to our accounts. The source profile. Sources are other persons or organizations who are not travel agents, but are responsible for bringing in business. Source can be, for example, assistants who make travel arrangements for their company's executives. The group profile. A group is an affiliation that sponsors business at your property. Group business may be an example. And then our last profile type is called the contact profile. The contact profiles are generally people who are group leaders or event staff for a particular group, reliable contact information can be keyed. So now I'm going to close out of the profile search screen. And now I'm ready to navigate the profile search screen. So I'm going to go back to where we were. I just wanted to show you how we got there. So I clicked on the reservations here, or I could click on the word reservations at the top. And then I can go down and click Profiles or click on the Profile button over here on the left. Now, in the Profile search area, if you notice, there's a yellow border. These yellow borders are, are, are um, on every search screen throughout Opera. And the yellow border uh, indicates this is a search area. There are many filters that we can search uh, for a particular profile. We have last name. We could search by company name. We could search by travel agent name. We could search by source name. We have a field for first name. We can view by the profile type here and only search for that particular profile type. We can search by communication. We can search by IATA number. IATA stands for International Air Transport Association and is attached to a travel agent profile or a source profile. If you notice down in the right hand corner here, you have several buttons here. Some are grayed out right now and some are not. The RAESV button stands for reservation and this would allow you to create a reservation for the profile that you have highlighted. So if we had a profile highlighted in this screen, we could create a reservation from this particular screen here. The new button, which is lit up right now, or as you can see, you can use the Alt N. It allows you to create a new profile. The edit button is to view or change an existing profile. And the close button, closes out of the profile search screen. If we want to go back to the profile search screen, we'll click on profiles and we're back to the profile search screen. Now, when you're searching for profiles, we have what's called a wildcard character in Opera. And this wildcard character is the percent sign. The percent sign on your keyboard is above the, the five. So if you do the shift five, you can use the percent sign. 
When using the wildcard, the user can type in a few letters of the item for which they are searching in Opera, and Opera will display all the matches. So if I do percent sign SMI, I'm going to click search, and Opera is going to return anything that has started with SMI. I get nothing there. If I type EHR and click search, it brings up a profile that has EHR in the last name here. So when you use the percent sign, it will search the whole name, okay, for anything that has uh, EHR in it. If I want to clear my search screen, I can click the clear button on the right hand side here and it would clear my search screen and I can search for another profile. Now I'm going to show you how to create an individual profile. First you want to make sure and search the database for the profile that you're creating to make sure there is not already a profile in the database. So if I wanted to search for a profile and the name is Thomas Hansen, I can type in H-A-N for Hansen, click on search. There's no profile that has been created. So if I want to create a new profile, I can click the new button or do Alt-N and it will activate the new button. Once I activate the new button, it gives me a choice. What type of profile am I creating? I'm going to create an individual profile, so it automatically defaults to individual. I can click on the OK, or if you notice, in dark black around the OK button, it is highlighted. So if you use the Enter button on your keyboard, you can press Enter, and it would take you into the individual profile screen. If you notice, up in the left-hand corner here, it tells you what screen you're in. We are currently in the individual profile screen. Now, the different components that make up the individual profile, if you notice our last name, and you notice that it's in bold, so that means it's a mandatory field. Some other components are the first name. This box here is for the middle initial, or the middle name. I like to use proper casing when I'm creating my profiles. Using my tab key, it will take me to the next line in the first name. So I type in the first name, I tab, and it will take me to the middle name field. I tab down, it automatically defaults the language to English. If I tab, and then it wants me to put in a title. Now notice there is a drop down here and this whenever you see a down arrow here that means there's choices there and you can choose from the drop down. Another way to access the drop down field if your cursor is in the field and you press F9 it will activate the drop down for you. And in this particular hotel these are the choices for title. I can use my down arrow and my up arrow or I can use my mouse to choose, or if I knew what the title was ahead of time, I can just type it in here and then hit my tab key. Tab keys takes me to the address field now of the profile. Notice that there is three lines for the address heel field. It defaults to home address here, so you have three lines here. This would be for the primary address, guest address information. With the additional address information, such as apartment numbers or building names, you can put those on lines two or three if you would like. So for the address, using proper casing, if there was an apartment, I could put apartment number 213 using my tab key. And notice I'm in the postal code field. If I put in the postal code, it will automatically put in the city and state for me. Now, you have to remember, if the city and state is from another country, you would have to put the correct country here in the drop-down. We have set up for our profiles for this particular hotel to default to the home address and to the country as U.S. for all our individual profiles. 
This would be set up in our configuration, which will be another class. Using our tab key, we can navigate to the internal information. Notice in the salutation, there is something here. This is populated automatically when you put choose something in the title field. So it pulls the title and the last name of the guest. Notice our next field is the VIP field. So if your hotel uses VIP statuses, then you can attach a VIP status to the profile. Notice it's a drop down. So if you don't like to use the mouse, you can press F9 and it will bring up the drop down and show our different VIP statuses. I'm going to choose VIP2 for me. Now, the rest of the information on the profile um, is up to the hotel if they want to use it. We have a place for nationality if you want to track the nationality of this particular guest. Notice the reference currency is USD for this particular hotel for US dollar. We can attach a business segment to the hotel. Notice in this particular hotel we're not using the business segment. So you can set up in configuration different types of business segments and attach it to the profile. We also have a choice for mail action. And in this particular hotel, we have several mail actions here. So if the guest is always looking for catering promotions or seasonally mailings or package special, specials, we could attach this mail action to their profile by clicking the box below the X, it marks the, the item, and I click OK, and it attaches it to the profile. There's a box for mailing list. If you want this guest to be included in your mailing list, you could check it, and they would show up on your mailing list. We also have a item for keyword. If I click the box, and I click New, we can attach a keyword to this particular profile. What Keyword will allow you to do is to group a bunch of profiles together all under the same keyword. So if you search by that particular keyword, you could pull up all the profiles that had that keyword attached to their profile. Keywords can all be configured in our configuration process when we configure the hotel. Over on the right, you have a place for date of birth. Notice there is a box here. This is a calendar. If you click on the calendar, you can choose the date from the calendar, or you can type in the, the, uh, the date of birth of that particular person on your profile. You have a field for passport number, and then you also have a field for client ID if you choose to use it. Now, in the bottom here of the individual profile here, you have a place for communication. You have different communication types. If you go to the drop down, you can use the arrow or you can click on F9 and it will bring up all the different types of communications that you have configured for your hotel. If I want to put my home phone number there, I would choose home phone number and then to the right of that, you would type their number and it depends on the hotel. You can add a dash between the numbers. You can add a period to the number uh, between the numbers, but it would be up to the hotel's discretion of how they want to put the numbers in. So I will put a number in and put a dash. Also in the communication fields, let's say we want to add the email address for this particular profile. If I click the drop down, I can choose email address, and then I would type in the email address of this person. Remember the email address will allow you to email out confirmation letters to the guest. It will also allow you to email out guest folios when a guest checks out. So it's very important that you get the email address information on the profile. Under the communication screen here, uh, or fields, below uh, you see three items here, active, contact, and history. The active checkbox, when checked, this profile is available to be attached to reservations. When unchecked, this profile is only searchable when the inactive box is checked on the profile search screen. The contact box next to it, select this checkbox if this individual is to be designated as a contact for a company, 
travel agent, or source. When this box is selected, the contact tab becomes active. Notice the contact tab becomes active. I'm going to uncheck the contact box. And then we have the history checkbox. This checkbox is used to save this profile from being removed when the profile is inactive for an extended period of time. The active contact in history boxes um, is the notes field. We will talk about the individual profile notes when we go to options. Notice down on the right hand corner here, you have a save button. Save allows the user to save the profile data and remain on the save screen. So if we click on save, it will keep us on the same screen and it will save our work. The OK button saves the profile data and closes the profile screen for the user. So if we click on OK, it closes out our profile screen and takes us back to the search screen. Notice how we're highlighted on the profile that we've just created. If we want to go back into this profile, we can either double click on the blue line here or the name, or we could click on the edit button here. The new button down in the right hand corner, new opens a screen to create a new profile. And then the bottom one is the close button. This closes out of the profile screen, but will give a prompt to the user asking them if they would like to save, if they have not saved recently. So once I close, takes me back to the profile screen. If I want to clear my search, click on clear. And if I want to search for my profile, type in the last name Hansen, click on search. We find my profile. Notice it tells you what type of profile it is. It's an individual profile. It shows the last name of the first name in blue. If we wanted to open the profile, we can double click on the profile and it will take us into the profile, individual profile screen. If you notice down at the bottom, we have what's called a red lamp. It brought up a red lamp for communications. Whenever you have more than one communication in your communication field, we have a home number and an email address, it will produce a red lamp down at the bottom. If you wanted to see the communications, you can do a single click on the red lamp and it will take you to the communication information field. On the individual profile screen, you notice up in the top left we have a More Fields tab. If I click on it, it tells you we're in the More Fields area here and we're wondering what is More Fields? This profile screen More Fields tab provides an area which the property can customize by adding fields that they do not appear elsewhere on the profile screen. So we could add additional fields here if the property would like. Close out of the more fields. Then the next tab up in the left is called the stats and info tab. What is the stats and info screen? The stats statistics tab and information screen offers a concise summary of stay and revenue statistics for the current profile. We've got statistics for this year, we have statistics for last year. Number of room nights, number of arrival rooms for this particular profile. Since we just built this profile new, they will not have any statistic information as of yet because they have not stayed in our hotel one night yet. The information tab, this screen flags whether the, the uh, profile is restricted and whether this uh, profile would show an AR account information for the selected profile. So we could click on Restricted. We can add a restricted rule to this profile. And we can also create an AR number attached to this profile, which we will do in a later training. We've put the restriction in. We can save it or click OK and it would save it for you. I'm going to click OK here. If we go back to the Stats and Info button, go to Information, it shows our restriction on this profile. Just wanted to explain under the Information tab the restricted area a little more. So when you click the Restricted box, 
This field allows a user to place a profile on a restricted list, also known as what we call blacklisting. When the box is checked, Opera will allow you to enter a reason, rule of why this profile is being restricted. When a restricted profile is attempted to be attached to a reservation, the user will get a prompt saying that the profile has been restricted and the rule text will be listed. Okay, so that is the restricted box. I'm going to click close and it will take us back to our individual profile. Now we're going to look at the individual items down here in the right hand corner, the attributes and the history information. Under the attributes we have rate code. When there is a negotiated rate attached to a profile, and we will show you how to get attached an individual rate here in a little bit. So the individual profile options negotiated rate. This is where the negotiated rate code will display here. Under history information, the AR number. When an AR number or accounts receivable number is attached to a profile, which was under the stats and info area, the primary AR number will display here. Member number. When there is a membership number attached to the profile, and we'll learn to how to attach a membership number here in a little bit, this is where the primary membership number will display. The last room field, the room number of the last checked out reservation attached to this profile will display in this field. The last rate field, the room rate of the last checked out reservation attached to this profile will display in this field. And then the last visit field, the arrival date of the last checked out reservation attached to this profile will display in this field. If you notice down here at the bottom, we have created by and updated by. At the bottom of some screens in Opera, you will see a recording of who created an item, such as a profile or a reservation, and who last updated the screen. The text is usually in blue, down at the bottom, and it will list the username, the login username, date and time at the property, who performed the initial action of creation, or was the last user to update the item. Searching options. With, when within an individual profile, a user may need to search for another individual profile. The way that you can search for another profile, there's a couple ways of doing it. The first is selecting search in the upper right hand corner of the search screen or of the profile screen. From here, you can search for another individual profile and select it for viewing. Ask you if you want to save takes you to the profile search screen and we could search for a new profile. The other way to search for another profile down in the left hand corner here you have select another profile. We can click on select another profile and once again it will take you to the profile search screen so you can search for an additional profile. Okay we are going to talk about the option button next year. And you wonder, what are options? What are options? Options are used throughout Opera to enhance all profile types and reservations. Depending on and based on your application settings and configuration, that will tell you what has been activated in Opera. So the options button will vary from property to property. So I'm going to click on the options button, and it's going to take me to the options area. Notice at the top here, it tells you you're under the individual profile options. The attachment, I'm going to skip over add-on for a minute. The attachment here, if I click on attachment, allows you to save a file attachment, just two megabytes or less, to the profile. So if we wanted to attach a Word document to this profile, maybe the guest is requesting a lot of things in their room and they send you a list on a Word document, you can attach it to the profile. By clicking on new, you can name the file. We could put guest requests. And then you would click on the drop down and choose the file off your desktop or wherever you have it located. Once you choose the file, you would click on upload 
and it would upload that file and attach it to your attachments. And once you close out of options, you will have a red lamp down at the bottom that says attachments. I'm going to go back to options. The next button is changes. If we click on changes here, the change button shows you all records of all changes made to a profile and stores all the changes in history in the system for the life of the profile. Notice on the left here, it's by the person's login. The time, this would be the Opera server time. The date of those changes, what I did, and the description. If you want to see more of the description, you can double click on the description and it will allow you to see more information. Notice over on the right hand side, we can click on report and we could print this report out if we wanted to save and print out the actual changes that we've made to this profile. The next button is the delete button. This will delete a profile from the Opera system. Once deleted, the profile can no longer be recovered. And always remember, this is a permission. And so if anybody has the permission, they will be allowed to delete the profile. The next button is future. This button shows all future reservations that are attached to this particular profile. If there's any future reservations, it would show the arrival date, departure date, rate code, number of adults, this information on the future reservation screen. Notice you can create a new reservation from here. We'll close out of future. The next button is the history button. The history option shows the stay history for all reservations attached to a profile and the revenue that was generated from their past stays. These are all the different fields on the history option. The next button is the membership option. If your hotel uses the membership option, this is a parameter or a in configuration, you can turn it on or turn it off. If the hotel belongs to memberships, maybe they have airline memberships, or maybe they have their own hotel membership, well, you can attach a membership to the profile. So if we go to memberships, I don't have any attached right now. To attach a membership to this profile, I would click new. I would choose the type by clicking the drop down, or if my cursor is there, I can hit the F9 button on my keyboard, and it lists all the different types of memberships that this hotel may offer. If I was had an airline membership to Air Canada, I could choose Air Canada. The guest would give me their card number, place the card number there. If they had a certain level, maybe premium level, gold level, silver level, platinum level, we could create that. And then if the card is invalid, it would tell you and it would not let you attach it. Closing, I do not want to save my changes. It closes out of my membership and I'm back to options here. The next button is the merge button. When multiple profiles exist, Opera gives the ability to merge the profiles into one profile. The user will select a profile as a primary profile and merge the profile. When it merges the profile, it merges the addresses, it merges the communication methods, the reservation history, all into one collective record in Opera. Only the profiles of the same type can be merged together. So an individual profile to an individual, a company profile to a company, a travel agent profile to a travel agent profile. The next option is NEG rates, which stands for negotiated rates. This allows the hotel to attach a rate code to the profile so that we know what rate that person is supposed to get. So to attach a negotiated rate, I'm going to click New. It will give me a list of rate codes that are being used at this property. And you would find the rate code that that guest gets every time they come to your hotel. I'm going to choose Negotiated Rate Tier 1. I'm going to click on OK. It attaches it to the negotiated rates. I click Close. When I click Close, it gives you a red lamp down at the bottom. If I wanted to view that negotiated rate, I can do a single click on the red lamp and it would take me to the negotiated rate field. We're going to go back to
Profile Options, and the next button is Notes. So if we click on the Notes button, this allows you to attach different types of notes to the profile. These notes are identified by types such as reservation notes. We also have property notes. We have background notes, central notes, general notes, and web notes. Always remember when you attach a reservation note to the profile, when you create a reservation for this guest using this profile, those reservation notes will attach to the comment line of the profile. So to create a note, I'm going to choose Reservation Notes. On the title, I'm going to put a title of Guest Reservation Notes. And then in the notes, maybe I could put the date of when I'm putting the notes in, but also see that there's the date up above here. So I could put the note in, Guest. I'm going to click on OK. We've created the note. I'm going to click Close. Notice we have a red lamp for notes at the bottom. It also shows up in the Notes field here. If you wanted to add multiple notes, we could go to Options. We could go back to Notes. We could click New. Choose our note type. And let's say this is going to be a general note this time. Our title. Guest loves chocolate. We click OK. Now we have two notes on the reservation, or on the profile, excuse me. Notice the last note is the one that shows up on the note line. If you want to see the notes, you could click on the red lamp here, or you could click on this ellipsis button at the end of notes, and it would also take you to the note, the individual note field. If we go back to options, our next option is preferences. I'm going to click on preferences. The preference option is to be able to attach guest preferences to the profile. So these are different likes and maybe dislikes on the profile. There are different types of preferences. If I click New, the different types of preferences, we have room features, we have floors, maybe the guest always wants to request a certain floor at your hotel. We also have a group called Special Request, and then we have many others here. So if we want to attach a room feature to this profile. We can choose the room feature group, click on OK. Once we click on OK, it gives us a list of room features that have been configured for this particular hotel. Every hotel will configure their own room features, so the room features will be different from hotel to hotel. If you want to choose a particular room feature, let's say the guest always likes to have a balcony, we can click the box besides balcony, puts an X on it and let's say the guest always likes to be near the stairs. We choose those two features, we click on OK and there's our room features. If we wanted to add a preference special request, I can click New and I will find the specials group, click on specials and OK and it gives me this list of special requests for this hotel. Say the guest is always going to have a pet in the room, so we would choose that as a special request. Click OK, and here are your special requests. If I close out of the preferences, if I close out of options, we have a preference lamp down at the bottom. It just tells you that there's preferences in the preference area that have been chosen. Also notice under the negotiated rate, under the rate code for attributes, it shows the negotiated rate that we have attached to this profile here. I'm going to go back to options, and under options, our last button is the relationship button. If I click on relationships, relationships are a way to reflect profile linkage. You may link many different types of profiles together for different reasons based on configuration. The most common linkage between individual profiles would be if there were an employee for a company or they have a preferred travel agent through the company. So we could attach Thomas Hansen's preferred travel agency here, or we could also attach what company Thomas Hansen works for. That would be considered a relationship. The option that I have not covered is the add-on option. If you notice, on the individual profile, Thomas Hansen has his address information, VIP status. If you wanted to create a new profile and copy his information on here, so a reason maybe why you would copy the profile information, 
maybe Thomas Hansen's information here is his business address. So maybe there's another co-worker of Thomas Hansen's that's going to come in and you would like to copy this information from the profile because they work for the same company and you want to add the same address. So if you click on add on, it gives you everything that you can copy. So if it's the company address, we could leave the address checked. If it's the company phone number, we could leave the phone number attached. But if it's his email, maybe we won't want his email address on the new profile or his fax. We may not want the notes on there or the preferences. But what Opera will do is copy the address information and the phone information when we're creating a new profile. So if I click OK here, it takes me to a new profile screen. And if you notice, it only copied the address information and it only copied the communication information. We could change the last name to a different, maybe his coworker's name, and create a profile for his coworker. But at this time, I'm not going to create a second profile. So I'm just going to close out of here. I do not want to save the changes, so I'm going to click No. And it's going to take me back to my individual profile options screen here. Okay, we've covered all the individual profile options on the individual profile. And we've covered everything, all the fields on the individual profile screen. So I'm going to close out of the individual profile. And it will take me back to the profile search screen. A couple things I want to point out on the profile search screen. So when we bring up Mr. Hansen's profile, Notice now we have more information here when you pull up his profile. We know Mr. Hansen is a VIP2. We know he has a negotiated rate. And the dollar sign also tells you when there's a dollar sign by the guest name, that tells you that this is a negotiated rate attached to this profile. You also have the red lamps down here at the bottom. So if you wanted to access Thomas Hansen's notes, we could just do a single click on the notes and we could see Thomas Hansen's notes. Okay, I'm going to close out of the profile search. It will take us back to the main menu. And the next profile type that we're going to talk about is the company profile. So if I go back to reservations here and I click on profiles, it brings up our profile search screen. And I'm going to choose the view by and I'm going to choose company. And I'm going to choose my company name, FedEx for Federal Express, and I'm going to click search. If it is not in our database, then we would click a new profile. So I'm going to click on new profile so you can see what the profile screen looks like. Once it opens up, up at the top in the left hand corner, it tells you you're on the company profile and we call this an account in Opera. And for the company full file, in order to find out how many guests a company sends to a hotel, a company profile is created to track production. This profile is attached to a guest reservation to gather these statistics. Company profiles are also important when there is direct billing for a reservation or a negotiated rate. What are the components of the company profile? Well, the first component is the account or the name of the company or account. There's three lines for that account here. Next is the address here. So we have the address line. There is four different lines to put the address in. So you can enter the primary guest information on line one with additional address information such as apartments, building numbers, or names on lines two and three. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my company address here. And remember, if I put in the zip code, it will put in my city and state for me if the country is the same. Notice on the company profile, we have the address defaulting in this hotel to AR address. Or you could have it default to the business address if you wanted to. Over on the right hand side, we have the owner button. And here's the owner for the internal information. A hotel may want to assign a salesperson or manager as the account manager for a company. The owner screen allows for an Opera user to be assigned to a profile. This is more commonly used when a property is using our Opera sales and catering. If I click here in configuration, we can set up different owners 
or salespeople that can be attached to different company profiles. The next field below that is territory. A property may want to assign account profiles to a certain territory, and these are configurable. I do not have any configured in this particular property. The next box is the keyword. It's just like the keyword that we had in individual profiles. Keyword is a way to quickly search for a company profile without typing in a full company name. For example, the keyword for Oracle Hospi Hospitality could be Oracle. The next line is the type. This allows you to change the profile to a different profile type as long as there is no production on the profile. So we could change the profile type of this particular profile from company to source or company to travel agent. Once again, there can be no production on this profile. And below that is the AR number. Remember we talked about the AR number on the individual profile. When an AR number is attached to a profile, you can do this through stats and information tab under AR number, which we'll do later on. And here is where the primary AR number will display. The next box is the corporate ID field. The corporate ID field is a searchable number that can be used as a, neat, a unique way to identify a company. So if that company has a corporate ID, you can put their corporate ID number here. And the next line is the reference for the currency for this particular company. And for this particular company, we have United States dollar. Below that, we have the communication fields. Remember the communication fields are used to gather different contact methods for the guests, such as the email address. We can gather the telephone number, we have email address here. We can gather a business phone number, and we can also gather the fax number if we want. You can add multiple communication items to this field. So if I have the business phone number of this business, I can enter it here. Remember, it's up to the hotel if they want to put dashes or periods in between the phone numbers. If we wanted to add an email address, we can click on the drop down, choose email address, okay. and now we've entered the communications area. And remember, we can add more than one communications here. And if we go back up to the address area, I forgot to point out, there's an ellipsis button. So if the company had more than one address, maybe they have a different address in a different city, we could add a second address to this company profile. If I click on the ellipsis, here's the address that I've entered. If I want to create a second address, I can click New, choose what type of address is. Let's say it's the business address, and then we could enter the business address. Put in the postal code, and it will put in the city and state for you. And notice that you have a box for primary address. So whichever one is marked as primary address will show up on the front of the profile. So right now we have AR address as our primary address. If we close out, we can see that is the address that is showing on the front of the profile. Down at the bottom, we also have red lamps on the company profile. One says addresses. That means I have more than one address attached to this company profile. And we also have a red lamp for communication, which tells me that I have more than one communication attached to this profile. If I did not want to go to the ellipsis for the address, I can click on the red lamp, do a single click, and it will take me into the account addresses. Right above communications, there's the active box, same thing that we saw on the individual profile. Remember, when checked, this profile is available to be attached to reservations. When unchecked, this profile is only searchable when the inactive box is checked on the profile search screen. And also down at the bottom, remember from our individual profile, it shows who created this, on what date and what time, and at what hotel or what property. And if anybody has made any updates to this profile, it will show up down here in blue also. All right, what is the more fields tabs? Remember we had one in the individual profile? So let's go ahead and click on the more fields tab here. Remember the profile screen more fields tab provides an area which the property can customize by adding fields that do not appear elsewhere on the profile screen. 
if you notice on the company profile, there is some fields already here. There is a tax ID field. This allows a company's tax identification number to be entered into their profile. This may be done in case where a company is tax exempt. So we could put their tax ID number here. The box below that, we call it routing instructions. Opera has the ability to attach default routing instructions, billing instructions, on an account profile. When it's set up, the routing instructions can be attached to a profile without manual setup. Just so you know, when we make reservations, we will go over routing so you will understand it farther. These routing instructions will be defaulted, defaulted to the second folio window. As I said, routing will be trained in detail during the reservations module. So we'll come back to this. Okay? So this was the more fields. I'm just going to click on OK. And it will take me back to the company profile screen. All right. So what is the stats and info tab? So if we click on the stats and info tab, if you remember, we saw this on the individual profile. The things that are included on the stats and info tab is you've got the statistics for this year and last year. And you also have a tab for the information screen, which offers a concise summary of stay and revenue statistics for this current profile. On the statistics screen, this screen shows profile production for the selected profile. This production will compare the current year to the previous year. When a company, travel agent, group, source, contact profile is attached to the guest reservation, then the production for that reservation will be reflected in the production for that profile type. On the information tab, if you remember from the individual profile, this screen flags whether that profile is restricted and shows the AR account information for the selected profile, just like we did on the individual profile. All right, the AR account field, this is a drop down arrow which allows the user to enter the AR account setup screen. Once on the screen, the user can add an AR number to the profile for direct billing purposes. We will go over how to create an AR number um, in a later training. If you also see down at the bottom, you could type in what you think the potential is for this particular uh, company profile so that you know what you think the potential room nights for this profile is and what you think the potential revenue is from this particular company. I'm going to close out. It will take me back to the profile screen. Now let's take a look at the options. And instead of clicking on the options button, do you think there's another way that I can access the, the menu button? Do you remember I said earlier that you can use your Alt key and the other line, so I could do Alt I, and it would activate the options key. Another way you can do it is if you do Control T, it brings up your options field down at the bottom. So if you knew what those options were, remember one of the options was one of the options was merge. So if I press M, it would take me to the merge field. If we go back and look at options again, so you can remember what they were, we have one for attachment, we have one for future. So if we go back and we do control T and we want to look at future reservations, I just type in F. Notice down in the left hand corner you have future reservations and then if I just hit the enter button it will take me to future reservations. If I want to close and I don't want to use the mouse, I can do an Alt-C, and it would take me back. If I wanted to look at history, past history information on the options, I can do Control-T, type H for history, and press Enter. It takes me to the history screen. If I want to close out of it, I do Alt-C, takes me out of the options screen. So let's just take a look at the options. Remember, we've already went over most of these in the individual profile, but I'll bring them up again so you can see them. The attachment we went over, remember this allows you to save a file attachment to this profile that is 2 megabytes or less um, to the profile. 
Remember the Change button records all changes made to a profile and stores all change history in the system for the life of the profile. Remember the Delete option was to delete a profile directly from the system. Once deleted, the profile no longer can be recovered. Remember our Future options shows all future reservations attached to a profile where our history option shows the stay history for all reservations attached to a profile and revenue generated from past days. Remember in the individual profile we had the merge button. When multiple profiles exist, like if we had multiple FedEx profiles and we wanted to merge them together, Opera gives the ability to merge the profiles into one profile. The negotiated rate button allows the hotel to attach a rate code to the particular company profile. So if FedEx Corporation always gets negotiated to rate, we can attach the negotiated rate to it and we would know that that company always gets that particular rate code. We go back to options. We have notes just like we had on the individual profile. Remember notes attach notes to a profile. Notes are identified by types such as reservation notes, property notes, general notes. Remember in accounts or under company profiles, we also have one called financial notes, marketing notes. And we also have the preference button that we had on the individual profile. And remember, there are different types of preferences. We have floor preferences. We have room feature preferences. We have smoking and non-smoking preferences. We have specials preferences. These are all the same as we had on the actual individual profile. Last button here is the relationship button. And remember, relationships are a way to reflect profile linkage. You may link many different types of profiles together for different reasons based on your configuration. So maybe the Federal Express um, company profile, maybe there's different employees that come here and stay at the hotel. So we could attach those different employees' profiles to the Federal Express relationship button, and we would know that they work for Federal Express. I will close out, and that completes the options. We also have talked about most of the fields on the company profile. I'm going to close out. We will save our changes. Notice when we go to the profile search screen, we have the dollar sign next to the, to the Federal Express name. That tells us there's a negotiated rate attached, and we also have the negotiated rate code attached to the profile. We close out, takes us back to our main Opera screen menu, and we've created a company profile. Now we will talk about the actual travel agent profile that we have in the Opera property management system. So we're going to go back to profiles by clicking on the profile button. And we also can talk about creating a travel agent profile. Now, in order to find out how many guests an agent sends to a hotel, a travel agent profile is created to track production. This profile is attached to a guest reservation to gather these statistics. Travel agent profiles also allow the hotel to decide if an agent is to receive a commission for booking a reservation. And remember, we talked about IATA earlier. What does IATA stand for? It stands for International Air Transport Association. And this is the number that is attached to the travel agent profile. So we're going to search for the profile. So let's say we're going to call it Oracle Travel. Let's say Oracle has their own travel agency. We're going to search to see if we have an Oracle Travel travel agent profile created in the system. And we do not. So we're going to click New. And we're going to choose the travel agent type profile. And we're going to click on OK. And it will take us in to the travel agent profile. Now, sometimes simply called agents, these are professionals who book business at your property for the guests who are their clients. Travel agent profiles are very important in managing relationships 
and also handling the commissions you pay to these travel agent accounts. Once again, what are the travel agent components or the components of the travel agent profile? We're going to just go over a few of the uh, different items here on this screen because we've already covered them in the company profile. Um, but the first one, remember, is what's your, the account name. It's got three lines, so you put the name of your travel agency. Another one I want to point out is the IATA number. This number allows a property to know that an agency is legitimate and should receive commission for making a reservation. So we would put the IATA uh, number here that is assigned to that particular travel agency. So I'm going to enter the address. Remember, tabbing will help you navigate through the profile. I'm going to put in the postal code. Remember, it puts the city and state there. We also have the owner information. So if you want to assign a salesperson to this particular account so that you know who's in charge of this account, you would fill out the rest of the travel agent profile by going to communications to add the phone number of the travel agency. And we could also add an email address here if we'd like. Okay, I'm going to click on save. On save. Just I wanted to point out the travel agent profile also has the more fields tab, tax ID, you can attach routing instructions, which we will show in a later class. We also have the stats and info tab, where it can show statistics from this year versus last year. We also have the information tab, so we can put the restricted on it, and we can add an AR account to it. But if you notice, there is also a separate tab up here that was not on the company profile. This is the bank account and commission code that we're going to pay the travel agent commission, how much we're going to pay them on commission. Opera allows the user to designate a bank account to pro process commissions from. Also in this section, you may designate a commission amount, commission code, to be paid to an agent. Though both fields are on the same screens, you may choose one or both. So if I want to attach a bank account, each hotel will have a bank account created. We're going to call it Elite Training and for that property. And we're going to choose EFT, Property Commission Processing. And let's say this particular travel agent will get 10% commission whenever they book a reservation at our hotel. So now we've attached the bank account. We've also attached the commission code here. We can click Save. And OK, and it will take us back to the front of the screen. The screen, I just want to point out, we have the same options in the travel agent profile. So I'm going to click on options so that you can see we have the same options. The only different one is we have one called commissions. That's one that's different. The commissions button, if the agent has outstanding commissions to be paid, this allows this button allows the user to go into the commission processing module and process the commission records. In another class, we will learn how to do commissions and how to process your commissions. If you click on the button, there's no commissions for this particular travel agent, so it does not take us into the travel agent commission field. So that is the only difference, uh, the only button that's different we went over on the company profile. We still have the Changes button, the Future, and History. We can merge travel agent profiles together if there's multiple ones that we want to merge together. We can attach negotiated rates to the travel agent and attach notes, preferences, and relationship. And we have went over all of these on the company profile. I'm going to click Close, and it takes me back to the main travel agent profile, and that completes the travel agent profile. file that we're going to talk about is called the source profile. Sources of business are people or companies that may send business to a hotel. In some cases, they display similarities to a travel agent, but may not earn commission. A source profile is created to track production, just like a company and travel agent profile. So some of the sources or persons or organizations 
that are that could be created are source profiles who are not travel agents but are nevertheless responsible for bringing in business sources can be for example secretaries who make travel arrangements for their company's executives some other examples of sources could be administrative assistants travel bookers and maybe a convention and visitor bureau so it could be a travel booker for a certain company and you want to track the amount of business this person is bringing in for you. So if Marcia Simpson works for Oracle Travel, we could create a source profile for Marcia Simpson. So I could search to see if she has a profile. She does not. If I want to create a new source profile, I'm going to click New. I'm going to choose Source Profile. I'm going to click on OK. It takes me to the Source Profile screen. So under the account, I can either put last name, first name, or I could just put Marcia Simpson, but I think I would search for her by her last name. So I will put her last name first. And maybe in the line under her name, I could say that this person was a travel booker for Oracle Travel. So we know who she is. We could put the address of Oracle Travel here or the Oracle Travel where Marcia works at. Put the zip code in and it puts the city and state in there for you. We could attach Marcia's business phone number. And maybe we could attach her email address. Once I have inputted the information, I can click Save. I want to point out that we have the same two tabs that we had on the travel agent profile and the, pro, or, and the uh, company profile. So I will not go over in detail. I will just let you see and show you where they are. Stats and information. Always remember source profiles, we can put a commission on source profiles so they are commissionable also if you want them to be. And always remember the options on the source profile are very similar to the travel agent profile and to the company profile. So if you want to refer back to the company profile screen, you can look at that also, what we went over in detail. So always remember that the travel agent profile and the source profile options are identical, and also the screens are identical. Notice there's an IATA number here, and they're the same account, address, and communications, and options are all the same. So that is a source profile. So we've created an individual profile, we've created a company profile, we created a source profile, and the last couple profiles that we have left is called the group profile and the contact profile. We're just going to briefly talk about the group profile because when we do the training lesson for group blocks, we will go over the group profile in detail. So just so you know, Here's the group profile. A group profile contains any contact information pertaining to a group block. Group profiles are created when a group business block is created in Opera. The group profile will be reviewed during the group business block training, just like I said before. That has completed our training on profiles. I just want to review with you what we have completed today. We completed through in our profile course, we identified the different types of profiles used in Opera. Remember we use an individual profile, we use a company profile, we use a travel agent profile, the group profile, the source profile, and the contact profile. We showed you how to search for profiles using the profile search screen. So to search for a profile, we choose the View All. We wanted to search for our Oracle profile. We could type in Oracle, click on Search, and it brings up your Oracle Travel profile. Remember we created an individual profile called Thomas Hansen. If we just wanted to do use the wildcard, we can choose the percent sign. Type in three letters and search, 
will bring up everybody that has the three letters of H-A-N in the name. And there's our profile for Thomas Hansen, which we created earlier. If you want to open one of the profiles, you can either double click on the profile or click on edit. And this is what the individual profile looked like. The other thing we learned about is how to navigate through the profile options. So we went and looked at all the different options on the profile. We also looked at the options for company profiles and travel agent profiles. So that ends the class on profiles. Welcome back to Opera at Humber College. Now we were going to learn how to make a reservation. Again, we click on the PMS and click the login button. And we're going to start with reservations. So now we are going to create a new reservation. The first screen that opens up, we need to enter in the date of the reservation. It automatically defaults to today's date, and today's date can be seen at the top of the screen here. So we're going to make this reservation for arrival in May. So we select May and the dates. This person is going to arrive on the 14th and stay until the 16th. We then click OK. As you see, it automatically defaults to the number of nights. At this point, we're not going to fill in any other information. We're going to click OK. This takes us to the rate screen, and there is a lot of information on this screen. As you can see, we have the uh, room types. So this is a double-double non-smoking. If you click on this uh, acronym, you will find out more information about it. So the DDNS stands for two double beds non-smoking and there are a total of 28 rooms in the hotel of this type. And currently it's showing that there are 28 vacant, one has been inspected, one, uh, 16 are clean and 11 are dirty. Obviously if this hotel had some rooms that were occupied it would show that information here. So we're going to close that down. On the sides are the types of rates that we have available. And again, you can click on here, double click on here, and it will expand that. And we can say, see that this is an, a rack rate. And if we click here, it will show us rack rates and that it's a two double bed non-smoking. And for that, it's five, uh, $250. As you see, there are va various kinds of rates and packages down here. If we click on a sports package, We'll select this one. It shows sports package has a queen non-smoking room and full American breakfast for two and two tickets for a live sporting event. So this is where you would select your type of rate from. So for this exercise, we are going to click a rack rate in a DD room and click OK. This is where we enter in the guest profile information. So first of all, we are going to type in the name. And where it says name, here, this refers to surname. And generally speaking, in a PMS system, you are working in um, capital letters. So you type in the name, and you click this gray square here, and it will take you to the guest profile. Here you can enter in more information. So we have the title, the language, so the language is E for English. So we could pick other uh, languages from this drop down box. Oops, let's select it back to English. And here you can pick the title, Mr. So we have the option here of also selecting if this were a, a VIP from the sales office or a peak customer or something like that. Then of course we enter in the address. The city. The postal code. The country is automatically populated and then you would select the province. 
This information is very, very important for the revenue management, so it's important to fill in all this information. Select a phone number. And often now in hotels, they will want an email address as well. In some hotels, they may um, require a passport number or something like that. That's especially used in Europe, however, not so important in North America. Date of birth is a nice to have. You might want to do that for your frequent customers. Record their birthday so if they're there on their birthday, you can uh, celebrate it with them. So this is very, very important information to add in. Then you would click Save and OK. So now we have the address information in there. We have the arrival that pre-populated from the first page. And then we take check the type of payment. Credit card is always CC. And if it was non-guaranteed, if the person did not have a, a credit card to guarantee their reservation, then you would select non-guaranteed. For the purpose of this exercise, we're going to continue on with credit card. The source is, of course, where the um, the source of the reservation came from, so we're going to use telephone for this one. And it's duplicated here. The system will automatically know what type of credit card it is once you start entering in the number. And we want to attach this credit card to the profile so that we don't have to keep entering this in. And now we save, and we get a confirmation number here. This can be saved, and it uh, helps with ease of finding the reservation for future times. And when we exit out of there, it takes us back to the reservation screen in case we want to make up a second reservation. Prior to start, your guests will need a reservation arriving today. In our case, the 13th of April 2020. To start a check-in, you want to go to the front desk menu, click on it once. Uh, you can see that it becomes highlighted, and then you want to go to your arrival list. For that, you click on arrivals. To find your guest booking, you will need to type in some information. So in our case, we will type Smith, his last name. You just need to put the three first letters is enough in most cases. And click search. If it was not enough, you could have some more criteria. For example, uh, initial of the first name, the confirmation number, or the telephone number or email address in that field. To open the reservation, you just need to select it, double click on it, or alternatively click on edit. Now that the guest booking is open, you want to assign a room to this reservation. To do so, click on the room drop-down menu. Based on your guest booking selection, dates and room type, the system will now display all the rooms available at the moment. Please note that the room display will only be the vacant one, meaning that the previous guest is gone and they are inspected. They've been cleaned by housekeeping and checked by the housekeeping supervisor. If your guest has a specific preferences, you could add them in that section. Imagine that your guest wanted a quiet room or maybe a room away from the lift. To add it, you need to click on the drop-down menu. And then you need to find your code, which is displayed in that list. Ah, here we are, away from the lift. And here you can see there is a box in front, so if you click on it once, it will add a little cross and then you press OK. Now, to refresh your screen, you must press search. And here you will see that straight away the system reduces the selection of rooms available. The system will only show rooms which are matching all the code you have selected here, so ensure that you don't select too many, if not you will not have any result. To select a room, you just need to click on the line and click on OK. That will select your room number. 
Now, as you can see, your room has been updated. It is important to save. If you fail to save, the system will not print the room number on the registration card, and you will have to write it manually. The registration card is a contract between the guest and the hotel. It states that the guest is renting a bedroom and will pay for whatever he used during his stay. It is important that the guest sign it and complete it properly during uh, the check-in process. To print it, you need to click on Options, just here, and then you want to find the box called Registration Card, just here. And finally, once you've got the correct paper in the printer, you want to click on Print. Once the registration card is printed, you will need to explain to the guest what he's signing for. So we will repeat his date of stay. We will highlight the room number and the rate per night without mentioning them out loud because they are confidential information. You would then ask him to complete his address, confirm his contact details, telephone and email address. And if he's a non-UK citizen, he will also need to complete his passport details. Once done, get him to sign the form. While the guest is filling up the form, you will ask him for his credit card to authorize the cost of his stay, plus an extra 50 pounds per night to cover any extra he could get. Now, if you want to check the amount, if you click on this ellipsis button, just here, the system will calculate an estimation. So as you can see, it's number of nine times daily rate plus amount, which is a total amount of 1,020 pounds. If the guest didn't want it, you could always change the rule, authorization rule here, to number one, which is the cost of the stay only. As you can see, the system decreases the authorization we will block. Now, let's imagine in another occasion that the guest wants the extras. So press OK, click on OK. Now, in case the credit card number was different, you will update it at that stage. You are now ready to check in the guest. To do so, you just need to press OK. The system will pop a window telling you, would you like to check in the guest? Say yes. Your guest is not anymore on the arrival list because he has been checked in. If you want to find him, you need to close that panel. And then you want to go to the next option called in-house guest. Click on it once. And then you need to type in the details of your guest. So in our case, let's say Smith again. And click search. As you can see, the booking appears. We are now checked in, as you can see, in the room 407 that we selected previously. To open the reservation, double click on it. Before returning the guest credit card and then out the key, we will have to authorize the credit card on a chip and pin device. Now the chip and pin device will issue a docket a ticket. And on that ticket, you will have the authorization code. We will need to insert it in that section where it says approval code and approval de monte. That will allow us to charge the credit card uh, upon departure, using the money we blocked at check-in time. Um, to insert the code, you need to go to Option, and you want to go to Credit Card, then you want to go to the Authorization section, then you want to click on the Manual button, and uh, you want to go to the next time where it's Approval Code, and here, based on the uh, transaction code issued by the ship and pin device that will change, you type in the code displayed on the little top ticket. So in my case, I will type in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I click on OK. And I close that panel. And here you can see that everything has been displayed in that section. You should now verify that the guest credit card is signed and that the signature on the back of it matches the one which is on your registration card. If that is not the case, you may want to ask for a picture ID uh, in order to confirm that the credit card belongs to the guest. It is now time to return the guest his credit card and then out his room keys. Uh, also explain him how to access the room without mentioning the room number for privacy. Your guest has now been checked in and we are done with the task. To close your window, you just need to press OK and close your in-house guest panel. Welcome back to Opera at Humber. Now we are going to continue on with cashiering functions. So this time we are going to look at Quick Checkout. Quick Checkout is a function that is used to check guests out 
of the hotel quickly when they don't actually come to the front desk. During the overnight period, a folio is delivered to each guest room, a piece of paper that is slipped under the door with a summary of the, all the transactions that took, took place during the guest stay. The guest would review this in the morning and if everything was okay, would just tick the form to say that they are leaving quickly. This form would then just be dropped in a box by the front desk and the front desk agent would review those and then check the guest out quickly. So here we're going to say that 307, 308 and 503 have completed this quick checkout form. So we're going to check them out. So we click checkout and OK. And now we are going to process these charges. So this is going to Visa and we are going to post and check out the next room. Again going to Visa and we're going to post and check out OK. Again going to Visa and posting and that leaves just the one guest still to check out. So we're going to close this down.